Hey there, and welcome to Design by Wingnut Social. I'm your host, Darla Jethro Powell, and today we're talking about all things product design, and not necessarily hands-on, how are we going to make it, what are we going to make, but what the hell do you do with it once you have the idea? Where do we go with it? How do we get those vendors or Wayfair or Curry and Company's eyes on what it is that we're putting down? And today's guest, Nicole Lachey Ben, brings it. She delivers in spades. And I'm telling you, if you are interested in doing product design and you don't hire her by the end of this episode, you're making a huge mistake. I'm super impressed. I want to design something now just so I can hire her and see her at work. Terrific, terrific interview. But before we get in to my chat with Nicole Lachey Ben, of course, I have to tell you a little bit about the lady. Nicole Lachey Ben has always had a passion for interior design and design strategy. She got her BFA in interior design from Syracuse University and her master's in design management from the Savannah College of Art and Design. And I love me some Savannah. Oh my gosh, my favorite city in the whole world. Then she went on to work in sales for a handful of international interior product companies and bada bing, bada boom. This brings us to today and the expert she is around interior design and sales and getting your product out there. So you're not going to want to miss it. Stick around. Hey there, Nicole Lachey, Ben. Welcome to the show. How the hell are you? I am fantastic. I love that question too. And how you said it. <laughs> <laughs> we like to keep it fun. We like to keep it fun around here. It's just a very organic, casual conversation between two friends about the interior design business, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> such a fun topic. <laughs> All right, Nicole. So I've told the audience a little bit about you with your background and your bio. But before we dig in into this subject, which is I love this. This is one of my favorite subjects, sales, social selling, and interior design product selling, making all those monies. Um, tell the listeners just a little bit about you and what makes you such an expert in this, and we'll we'll dig in. Yeah, so um, I'm sure you covered this before, but I'm the CEO of Thrive and Design, which is a design and innovation consultancy specifically focusing on interior product companies and helping them increase their brand awareness and their revenue. So I do this by really taking a human-centered approach to understanding the full designer's journey, aka customer's journey, with that interior product company, finding any pain points, um, offering any solutions. Um, but this year, I'm really focusing on one part of that, which is social selling, which I'm super excited to dive into that um, today. But I got my start with interior design. So I went to Syracuse, studied interior design, and I fell in love with the design process and how it applies to business. So the, that design thinking aspect of it, the innovation aspect of it. And that led me to go on to Savannah College of Art and Design, get my master's in design management. And those two things kind of fused together. With interior design, design thinking, um, also love of product-based businesses, and led me to work for interior product companies on the sales side. And I found that in working in sales for all the years that I had, there wasn't really a lot of uh, focus on a designer's experience. There also wasn't a lot of focus on helping a sales rep actually successfully sell. <laughs> it's just, here are your products, go get them specced. Um, so within all of those things and all of my experience, I came to start my own uh, consulting firm and here I am today. But yeah, so I've won several sales awards and done all the things over decade plus. Um, so yeah, here I am today. So selling is something that a lot of interior designers struggle with, right? It doesn't come naturally or we get a little bit of a cringy feeling about it. At least me personally, I'll speak for myself, but from feedback that I have received from interior designers. So we will talk about that a little bit. Before we do, I want to tell you that Savannah is my favorite city in the whole entire world. I'm in love with Savannah. Are you still there? No. No, I'm in Baltimore. So I actually did my master's oh. through their e-learning program. So I only okay. actually got to go once for my graduation and then another time for just for fun because I also love Savannah. We're neighbors. I'm in Southern Maryland. Oh, nice. <laughs> You're not too far. You're not too far from me a little uh, at all. Yeah. So when you're talking about consultancy for product, are, are we are you dealing mostly with interior designers who are creating and designing their own line of product and then learning how to market and sell that? A little bit, a little bit. Um, you could be in the early phase of that, or it could be uh, an established interior product company. So okay, some of the companies that I work for, with are maybe between like ten to fifteen million dollars in sales right now. Okay, so you're consulting on behalf of, let's say, I'll just pull a vendor out of Curry. 
Curry and Company. Yes. That's something that you – okay, so larger brands. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about both. And let's start with – we'll start with the, the smaller, like interior designers who are doing product design and putting those out there. How How are you negotiating that to give designers advice on – and where do you come in? Have they already created the product? Is it already working? Are they already sitting in it, feeling it? And you're like, listen, this is how we're going to market it. The social selling, we're going to put it out there. Am I on track with that? Or am I, am I barking yes. at the wrong tree? Yeah, no, okay. you're good. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're in an early stage, you could be in like part A of that stage or part B of that stage. Part A would be, okay, I have an idea for this product and I want to test it and validate it to see if it will actually gain traction, right? Because I don't want any designer to go out there and be like, hey, I have this idea off the top of my head. Let me just put all my energy into it and try to put it out in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm working with somebody like that, it would be, all right, let's do some market research. Let's figure out, is there a differentiating factor with your idea? Let's do some testing to see if uh, your market or whoever you're targeting actually needs something like this. And that might be the end user or other interior designers that are specifying the style of product that you're creating. So that's that part A. And then part okay. B, you might be a step further in terms of product development. You've already done all of that stuff that I just talked about. Now you need to figure out how are you actually going to sell this product, right? And okay. then the interior design world, um, that could be going to retailers or big brands like Wayfair or something like that, or it could be on the traditional way of selling where it's going to designers, getting them to spec your product, and then the sale comes through that way. It's a little bit of a process on both <laughs> sides, I guess. <laughs> so it sounds to me like it's probably a really good idea to come to you at, at level A. Oh, yes. <laughs> we don't want to waste time. <laughs> okay. So so what kind of advice are, are you giving to interior designers at these levels? You're doing the A-B testing. You're test doing market research, right? And seeing, do we really need another um, palm frond toile wallpaper in the mind <laughs> or, or what have you? I've been looking at those recently sourcing for a powder room. Uh, you know, what, what advice or what are you seeing um, going on with this? Yeah. Or maybe I should say, you know, like maybe if you have an example or a story of someone that came to you and you, you pointed them in the right direction, a mistake they were making. Um, yeah. So I have a, a friend actually that I went to Savannah College of Art Design with. We were in the same program. She's an interior designer and is now developing a product line. <laughs> Um, and she knows the same process of design thinking that I know, right? And because we learned it together side by side. Sure. But sometimes in applying that to something that you're working on yourself is completely different. So for her, it was that, uh, that she had an idea. Um, she also has a daughter who creates art and she wanted to figure out how she can partner together with her daughter. Um, so in this early stage, I took her back to the basics. Okay. So in understanding, researching your market, it's really applying at least like three different research methods so that you can really understand. A lot of people, when they think about research, they're like, okay, let me do a survey or let me like post this on the internet and see if I get feedback. But there's actually like uh, almost like a science to how you choose your research method. Sometimes it might be um, a survey. Sometimes it might be observing um, your target audience in their element. So that might be um, going to a local retailer that you're thinking about partnering with and seeing what type of things your target audience is selecting. Um, it might be creating your own type of unique research method to give to your target audience. So say, for instance, you came up with uh, one type of wall covering since you're, you brought that idea up and you thought of three different colorways or three different patterns or different things like that. You would then create uh, maybe a small kit, sample kit that would then be given to your target audience, and then they could journal their experience or their thoughts or their feelings oh. so that you can understand empathy with those clients. So after you gather all of that data from many different people, not just a handful, then you can start to see the uh, commonalities that come up in there. And from those commonalities, that's where you start to gear your designs or your products towards. 
That makes sense. It's a it's just a lot like marketing research. Exactly. I mean, I'm familiar with that, right? <laughs> it's marketing research. So where are we finding this audience? Because the numbers, it's a numbers game too, right? You have to get so many people out there. Where are they coming from their email list or how are we sourcing this? Yeah, it, hopefully you have an email list, right? Um, but <laughs> if you don't, it goes back into the social selling topic that we kind of hinted at before. Sure. Um, so social selling is a lot different from social media marketing. So social media marketing might be creating a tailored campaign um, that's creating content. It might also dive into the advertising side where you're doing paid digital media. But social selling is really narrowing in on your target audience, building a relationship with them through social media platforms, and then getting them off the platform to actually participate in something. So whether that be market research, whether that be specking your product, or actually um, purchasing your product. Yeah. So there's a series of steps that could go on when it comes to social selling. So it's so important. And um, I'm sure you'll agree that the social selling is an escalation of having already built that know, like, and trust and building an account and building that engagement with uh, your super fans and your followers and nurturing that for a minute. Right. Would you agree? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Uh a hundred percent is it definitely an escalation and so they they go really really well together so um okay so we we have our our product in hand we've done all the market research there is a need so what's the next step that we're going to do with our designer well now you have to get your products back <laughs> right <laughs> so as we all know all the stages of a design project right your design as an interior designer you're designing for your client um, you're pulling your mood boards together, you're um, pulling and sourcing products, you take it back to your client, who is maybe the homeowner or what have you, present to that and go on and so forth. So in that design process, while that designer is specking and sourcing products, that's where the product manufacturer has to meet the designer at the right point. Does that make sense? So it does. It that does. could happen in a lot of different ways. <laughs> and sometimes residential and commercial sides of things are similar. Sometimes there are different caveats for both sides. But when it comes to um, getting the products back, really you're in like the awareness phase, right? So for me, I like to think of how an interior product company is integrating with an interior designer or getting the product space, sorry, spec. In um, three different phases, the awareness phase, the consulting phase, and then executing the sale. So the awareness phase is before the interior designer is actually specking your product. They need to become aware of your product. So awareness could be direct contact with that manufacturer through um, maybe trade shows. It could be through receiving uh, marketing materials. It could be through a presentation. It could be through getting the uh, marketing materials or sampling in their library. Any direct uh, contact that they have with a physical person and that interior product company versus indirect contact in their awareness stage would be something like a social media campaign, right? Okay. So they are coming across, the interior designer is coming across that product through social media campaign, through the website, through SEO, which you specialize in, um, all of these different ways that they're not necessarily touching a human being from that interior product company but they are in contact with that interior product company. If you've been listening to the show for a while, then you are probably aware that Wingnut Social is a digital marketing agency for the interior design industry. We do full service social media marketing, search engine optimization, and all of that good stuff. And we do a damn good job, if I do say so myself. But don't just take my word for it. Listen to Ann Gilliard of Grow Playrooms. I would... So highly recommend Wingnut, and here are several reasons why, and not to mention just the followers that we gained, which, by the way, was like 3,000 to 37,000 in a matter of months, um, but they are responsive to every tiny little question that I have. They are so knowledgeable about everything that I might need knowledge about. And they've also taken away the fact that I need to know anything about it, which is probably the best part. Um, and, you know, they have taken over different aspects of 
Instagram for us from commenting, commenting to doing the DMs. And it's just decreased the amount of time that I've needed to be involved. And I know that it's in really good hands. Um, they also got our voice super fast. Um, so all in all, like just uh, treats to work with. And um, I would do it a thousand times over. Thank you so much, Anne. We have loved working with you and Grow Playrooms and everything that you're doing over there has been amazing and we appreciate you so much. So if you're interested in finding out more about our services here at Wingnut Social, give us a call at 786-206-4331 or hit that website up, wingnutsocial.com, and click that little Let's Chat button and let's see how we can work together to take your business from meh to amazing. Are we aspirationally tagging our dream vendor who we want to collaborate with to yes. put this product out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we want to map out all of the dream touch points <laughs> um, <laughs> in the awareness stage, whether it be a direct contact with a person from that manufacturer or an indirect uh, contact with some type of media form or um, third party source like material bank or something like that right, so right you map out all of that and then we create a strategy for how we're actually going to implement it so that's the awareness stage there i'll tell you what if i was creating product i would hire you in a heart oh, good. because <laughs> because i think a lot of interior designers out there are a little lost in the sauce they have dreams and it's like some vague nebulous thing i want to create product but really have no point from a to b so <clears throat> yeah definitely so let's talk about Curry. I'm going to throw out Curry and Company again and shout out to Beth Ann Matari. So let's say I know Beth Ann and I'm creating something and I'm doing a little physical networking and social selling and, and tagging on there. How are we driving it home? How am I convincing Beth Ann or whoever's making the t decision over there to, to pick up my, my, my design? Or you're seeing it the whole way through, right? So in your scenario that you're talking about, are you saying you would be telling Beth Ann to pick up your product as a, or <laughs> I'd be schmoozing her. I'd be hitting her up at high point and saying, Hey, Beth Ann, you're looking good today. Why don't you see what, <laughs> or no, is that a bad story? I mean, if that works for you. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has their own individual charm, I would say. So I know for me as a sales rep, you know, I've been like, super outgoing over the years. I've like crashed people's lunches <laughs> and just, they tell me where they are. Like, this doesn't sound like a stalker, but they tell me, oh, I'm out to eat. I'm like, okay, I'm going to join you. And then that leads to building a relationship, <laughs> but you can't be a creep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I yeah, think, I, I get it. I yeah, get the it. right way to do it, <laughs> it, it, there's no real science to it, but I do say you do have to lead with authenticity authenticity of who you are mm -hmm. um and be real you know for yourself um but you also have to like care about the other person because at the end of the day in de interior design is for people and it's also a people business so yeah. you have to be willing to build an authentic relationship with that person really get to know them whether their desires what do they love and and build on to that right and see what your commonalities are and as you go forth then you can start to make an ask, right? You don't want to just come out the yeah. gate like, hey, you're looking good. Let me <laughs> let me sell you this product. Um, but it's and a Beth Ann is a friend of the show. And we love <laughs> Beth Ann. Right? I kid, I kid. And we do love Beth Ann. So um, the social selling point, let's get back to that in a minute. We do have a lot of clients at Wingnut who have aspirations to partner or be influencers with like say Tile Bar or Curry and Company. And we do that here at Wingnut Socials. We'll tag them in content purposefully meant to catch their eye. And they, these vendors are start building these social relationships with our clients and start to share them, reshare their stories. And we're, we're, they're putting up the radar, getting them on the radar and getting them on the flag, uh, you know, putting up the flag so they can see them. So that is, that's very impactful. And even putting money behind that as well. I think that is really um, smart. Can you dive in a little bit more into the social selling side, a little bit more on the strategy there for interior designers who maybe they have, maybe they're in part B and they actually have something and they want to start getting noticed? I think it really depends on what your objective is because you could do social selling at different points in different ways, right? So if your objective is to get your product specced, right, by other interior designers, that's one thing. It's another thing mm -hmm. if your objective is to get your product into a major retailer or 
um, picked up by a specific brand, right? So in the example of, let's do the easiest example of getting your products back. Um, that might be setting your objective. Okay, I want to get my products back by 10 designers in my local area or 10 top designers in the DC market, 10 top designers in Atlanta market, whatever that region is. And then you set out to start building a, a relationships with those people, whether it's following them, um, engaging with their content, and then um, going forth and adding value to them in some way, right? So it might be doing a little bit of research about projects that they're working on, um, understanding the different materiality that they're using in their projects, why they use it, who their target audience is in their projects, and then maybe sharing an article with them or sharing how your product kind of fits into that as well, right? So you always want to be adding value as well as building an authentic connection with that person. And as you move right. throughout that, then you can add, uh, uh, move to an ask, right? An ask might be, hey, can I set up a presentation with you? Or, hey, can I take you out to lunch? Um, again, giving them something in return, maybe some food or something like that. <laughs> and then some whiskey. Right. And then in that presentation, <laughs> you're giving them some more technical information. Um, maybe it's a fabric you're talking about, you know, double rubs or why it's good for a space with kids or what have you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's about following up after that to make sure that you meet them at the right stage in their design process to get them to spec your product. Um, so that's a little bit about social selling on the specifying side with an interior designer. If it's a bigger um, goal of, okay, my objective is to now get into a, a retailer or a partnership with an established um, interior product brand, that might be a little bit of a longer process. But I will say you have to understand who is the key decision maker that you want to build their relationship with, right? You don't want Smart. to be reaching out to the HR person or, <laughs> I don't know, someone random <laughs> at the company. <laughs> you have to the be, receptionist. Exactly. You have to be strategic <laughs> in doing your research on LinkedIn in different articles, what have you online to really understand who do I need to talk to? How can I reach out to them and show them that I'm a person of value, that I have something to offer and build an authentic relationship and go from there? But I think in both ways, it's similar steps. It just might be a longer process on one side. I love it. And I love that you said, be sure to add value. You want to give them something. And and these representatives for vendors are human beings. They're people too. They want to know that their brand or that you get them, that they're heard, that you get what it is that they're putting out too, that you're aligning um, with their vibe, you know, that they're putting down. So, Nicole, can you tell me, what are you seeing as far as trends in the interior design industry with product creation? What is it that is, um, what are you seeing a, a need for? Or what are you seeing a lot of that's working? Yeah, well, I think the main thing that has shifted everything that we all know mm -hmm. is the pandemic over the last <laughs> couple of years. The P word. Right, exactly. So <laughs> that really shook up what I saw in the interior design industry in terms of sales and some things in product development. In terms of selling, you really had to understand how a designer's experience or design process kind of changed because before everything was in person. And I actually um, was reading a little bit of research a few weeks ago that 80% of sales um, interactions were happening face-to-face -face between that interior product manufacturer and a designer. So mm -hmm. through meetings. And then after the pandemic, now we're doing 70% is still hybrid or digital. So now you have to think about if you're not getting 80% of your time in front of a designer as an interior product manufacturer, how can you start to translate uh, those experiences into hybrid or digital or somehow make your way into the little bit of time that they have for in-person interactions now that they know they can do things virtually. So that's one side. And then in okay. terms of uh, product development, I would say I've, I've heard a lot of designers um, asking for how technology can be integrated into whatever they're creating. So whether it is um, a piece of furniture that has um, you know electrical power in it or um, different USB ports, that has been a trend. 
Um, and also there's been, a, I would say, a more um, consciousness to the world. So people are looking for more like sustainable options. They're not going from cradle to grave. Instead, they go from cradle to cradle. Oh, okay. I like that. Cradle to cradle. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about how you help because we have some vendors that listen to the show too. How you help a Korean company or how you help some of the larger brands with their, their product selling. Yeah. So in a few different ways. One, um, I like to come in and audit, right? <laughs> uh <-oh>. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because a lot of interior product companies have been doing things the same way for a long time. Um, and disruption is not a good thing for them. They just either panic or they're like, okay, we're still just going to keep doing what we're doing. Um, so I like to go into a company and audit their customer journey or a designer's journey with their brand in those three phases that I talked about before, the awareness, how they're consulting designers and how they're executing the sale. And then we'll pull out any pain points and create a strategy for how they're going to move forward. And sometimes that also might um, involve actually facilitating a workshop within their department so that they can come up with solutions cohesively. Um, and then the next thing that I am doing these days is training. So if an interior product has an actual sales team, I actually go in and train them on specific things. So that might be that they uh, brought in people from outside of the industry that don't know anything about interior design. So they need the, the fundamentals of interior design and design sales. Or they might need help with social selling and how they're going to leverage that. So I'll train them um, and then provide one-on-one -on -one coaching from there. If you're in the early startup phase uh, and you're listening, if you need just some help in fleshing out your idea, testing your idea, doing market research, I'm here to support you in that way as well. Yeah, I would absolutely. Like I said, I said it before and I'll say it again. I'm so impressed. I would absolutely do that. Thank so you. before we get into the What Up Wingnut round, Nicole, I want to ask you um, briefly and um, we're, we're starting to get run out of time. So maybe this is too big of a question, but where does influencer marketing fall into place for social selling for the smaller designer who's, who's in the AB part of their product design and for the, you know, the, the Korean company? Oh, we might have to do a whole nother episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, or they'll have to call you. Yeah, exactly. They can call me because <laughs> I think I could go on for about 30 more minutes on that. <laughs> But I would just say um, a person, building a personal brand online is also important because the person behind whatever you're selling is super important these days. So as you share what you are creating, share the journey behind that, and that builds trust with your audience as well. Storytelling. Yes. So important. That's so important. All right, Nicole, is there anything that I've forgotten to ask you that you think that the audience needs to hear on this subject before we get into the What Up Wing round? No, I think we covered it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're excellent. So impressive. I love it. Thank you. All right. Now I have to ask you, are you ready? I'm for ready. The it round? All right. I'm ready. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? Faith over fear. Oh, I love that. That just gave me warm fuzzy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're stuck on a deserted island, but you can have your one favorite food forever now. What is it? It's almost hard. I was going to say eggs. Because you can make anything with eggs. <laughs> They're so expensive. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Maybe a chicken that could lay the egg. <laughs> yeah, eggs are pretty versatile. That's true. Last but not least, please recommend a book that has impacted you either personally or professionally. The Four Hour Work Week. Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, for sure. Yeah, that's a that's a really good one. I I haven't gotten to the point to where I'm only working four hours a week. And me neither. But, <laughs> but I'm aiming to goals. it. I'm aiming to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nicole Lachey, Ben, please tell the audience where they can go to find out more about you and we'll call it a day. Yes, they can head to www.thriveanddesign.co or at Thrive and Design on Instagram. So cute that you said www. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for being an amazing guest. Uh, you are going to uh, have your doors being knocked down by these product designers. So get ready. Can't wait. Can't wait. Thank you. How knowledgeable is Nicole? Seriously, what an impressive guest. I could talk to her on this subject all day long. Don't even get me started on social selling and influencer marketing. So impactful. And she really knows her stuff. I'm super impressed. Head on over to Thrive and Design. Her website's in the show notes at wingnutsocial.com slash podcast. Check out this episode with Nicole Lachey Ben. Get all of those deets and hit her up. Gosh, you can't go wrong because, you know, when you invest 
and an expert like that, it more than pays for itself. It pays for itself and then some. It really is a, a no-brainer. All right, that's it for this guest interview show for this Wingnut Wednesday. Make sure to head on over to wingnutsocial.com. Check out our services if you need help with digital marketing for your interior design business or any interior design related situation you got on there. Wingnutsocial.com and run, don't walk to get Instagram for interior designers. If you're not in a place to delegate done for you social media, maybe you have an intern or someone in house or you just have enough time on your hands to do it yourself. No brain got to do it. Wingnut Academy over there. And until next week, remember to get out there, get uncomfortable and be great. How impressive is Nicole? I'm telling you seriously, if you're out there and you're kicking around designing a product, whether you're at that level A Nicole was telling us about or B, how can you not hire her? She really knows her stuff. I would head on over to inter her uh, company Thrive and Design. Mm -hmm. That's it for this week, guys. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you for this, this bean burrito that just popped up in my mouth. <laughs>